as he's holding the child in his hand, my dear brothers and sisters. What happens thereafter? Dashrat Maharaj is filled with this bliss. Set your imaginations ablaze. And as they hold the child in his hand, Dasharat and his wife Kaushilya have a vision for the child. You know, when someone is getting a name for a child, it's very important to select the right name. You know, we believe in our system that two letters based on the astrology should be selected so that this Rashi will allow this child to manifest with the calling of this name. For example, when I was born, my mother, you and Uncle Dennis, Uncle Dennis grew up with all of them, and he's like a friend to me too. They would have called their guru, and I know mom and dad did this, my own mother and father. And the guru came and said, his name should start with Ha, He. So my middle name is Hiteshwar. Hiteshwar means the god of welfare. I'm not a god, but they named me that. A god that gives, that is what Hiteshwar means. So upon giving this name, I think, and forgive me for using myself as the example, I think that they had a vision for me. They had a vision as they held me in their hand that this child should give more than he takes in this life. And if we look at other names, like Prakash, for example. Prakash means Prakarshena Akash. A light that is second to none in this world. And as they would have held a child named Prakash in their hands, the mother and father, they would have said that this child will be a brilliant light for all to enjoy. So as they held the beautiful child, Sri Ram, in their hands, they had a vision for that child. They had a vision of Ananda Sindhu Sukarasi, that this child will be an ocean of bliss, an ocean of happiness that will bring happiness to the entire world. And one drop of his presence in this world will add to happiness in the lives of all. Tell me. When you think of Sri Ram, isn't that true? That you feel that inner bliss in your life? Whenever you're going through stress, anxiety, when the world gets the best of you, what do we chant? The other day in New York, a child came up to me. I'm sure Sonali, you would encounter many children as well in your field. And the child came up to me and said, Acharya Ji, am I worthless? I said, why would you think that? And she said to me, my mother and father tell me this every day. I'm worthless. That I'll never amount to anything in this life. And you know what my answer to her was? I pointed to a sign that was next to me. And it said, I am somebody. Why? God does not make junk. The mere fact that we are alive, that God has given us life, my dear brothers and sisters, means no matter how old we are, no matter how middle-aged we are, no matter how young we are, we have a purpose in this world. Everybody here is alive, right? Everybody? Alive? Yes, I thought so. The mere fact that you're alive means that you are worth something. You know, sometimes in life we retire, we finish our jobs after 65, 40 years of work, we retire. And sometimes we think that there's nothing more than this. But I want to let you know today that retirement is really rewirement. Rewiring your mind. Start to introspect, start to find that within you that is so natural to you, what is called Swadharma, one's own purpose in this world. God has put something in all of us, my dear brothers and sisters. There is some latent tendency that is dormant. 
But upon sitting ekanta alone for some moments of the day and meditating on why God has put you here, you will find your purpose. And when you do your purpose, it doesn't become work anymore. It becomes inspired action. This is the vision Jo Ananda Sindhu Sukarasi, as Guru holds this beautiful baby in his hand, the vision of the child was that this child will find his purpose. This child will give to the world Ananda, bliss, unequivocal bliss, my dear brothers and sisters, and be in the ocean of joy that wherever he goes, my dear friends, he will bring light and love wherever he is. You know, sometimes we go and we say, oh, I'm looking for the next person to give happiness. Isn't that true? You know, in our Hinduism, there's called, what is called, the variksha ceremony. It is the engagement ceremony. And what do the bride and groom do in the engagement ceremony, the fiancé? What do they do? They take a diya, and they hold this diya, both of them, and they say to each other very silently, what do they say? They say that, I am complete within my own like this light that I have in my hand. I am all happy, I am all blissful, I don't need anything to complete me. But today, I'm making the promise to share this happiness with you. At the end of the ceremony, they exchange the diaz. So in our lives, my dear friends, from the age 1 to 25, we're supposed to grow this happiness within through spiritual study. And what happens is, after the age of 25, it becomes very easy to be complete within oneself. To be an ocean of joy wherever you go. To be an ocean of bliss wherever environment you are in. No matter if it is conducive for happiness or not, you add to the happiness wherever you go. So, Sukadama, Rama, Asanama, because of this, the wonderful Guru says to Dashrat, I shall name this child, anybody can guess? Rama. The word Rama comes from the Sanskrit Dhatu Ram. Ram means to revel in happiness. Ram means to be happy for no reason. No matter what the outside world shows you, you are happy and steeped in that inner bliss that is peace, that is God. The other day someone asked me the question, Acharya Ji, where can I find God? You know, I see Krishna in the altar and he holds his basuri and I'm going through tough times and Krishna has the audacity to only smile and say nothing to me. And he shook the mood, he said, say something, Coach Bola. But I spoke to him very calmly and I said, my brother, you're going to the altar, you're asking Krishna to say something to you. He has spoken 700 verses, 18 chapters. What more do you need? My dear brothers and sisters, if we want to get to that inner bliss, we have to follow the injuncts of the Bhagavad Gita. And permit me to cross correlate, my dear brothers and sisters. The Bhagavad Gita with the Ramayana very briefly, as we learn how to be the best versions of ourselves by Sri Krishna's words in chapter 12, verse number 15. What does he say? Yasma no dvijate lokaha, loka no dvijate chayaha, harsha marsha bhayo dvegehe, mukto yas sacha me priyaha. The one who is the most dearest to me, the one who will experience me, the one who will experience that ocean of bliss that is the Lord, that is beyond the body and mind, they have to first be muktaha, free of these things. What is it? Number one, harsha. Harsha means elation, excitement based on the world of material objects. You know, when I first read this word harsha, I was cross-correlating. I was connecting with Jo Ananda Sindhu. But the harsha that Krishna speaks of in Bhagavad Gita is not Jo Ananda Sindhu. The harsha he's speaking about is external happiness. The one who is vimukta, free of any dependency on the world where we no longer look into the world for happiness but we grow that ananda sindhu within that is peace, that is the Lord that person, such a me priyaha is the dearest to God you know why? because they become one with God many people ask the question, what is devotion? 
How can I find Ananda Sindhu? How can I find that ocean of devotion that is the ocean of joy within? The answer is be one with God. Don't see God as separate from you. Don't see God as something you should fear. But see God as an aparoksha anubhuti, one's own self experience. To the one who does not depend on the world for happiness, to the one who has found that happiness within themselves, to such a person, I am the dearest. You know why? Because there is no higher love than being one with the beloved. Isn't that true? If beloved is there and I am here, that's not love. But what is the divine romance that Paramahansa Yogananda says? What is the divine romance? That I am one with that beloved. I am one with that ocean of joy within. And I know myself not to be the body that is aging, earth, water, fire, air, and space. I know my mind to not be me. It is not me. It is all full of thoughts that are some good, some bad. But I am the inner witness, that witness of joy within. So, yasma no dujate lokaha, loka no dujate chayaha. So, the one who does not disturb the world because they're going into the world looking for happiness, to the one who has no expectation, there's no more expectation of another to bring me happiness because I'm filled with that ocean of joy within. To such a person, they are not troublesome to the world and the world can never trouble them. To such a person, such a me priyaha, that is the most dearest to me. So do we see what Joa Ananda Sindhu means? To the one who finds that inner bliss, they have found Raf. To the one who has found peace, they have found God. And to the one, my dear brothers and sisters, who depends on the world for happiness, their mind is full of expectation. And with expectation, we're always disappointed. Think about the last person who promised you something. I promise I will do this. And think about when they did not fulfill that. How did you feel? Did you feel upset? Did not you feel anger and jealousy when they did not do what you wanted? If we live our lives in expectation, we'll never be able to find that inner bliss. Find that inner bliss within yourself and have no expectations of the world. The world has been put here for us to enjoy. But the only one who can enjoy is the one who finds that inner bliss, that Parama Atma, that peace that is waiting to be discovered within, that inner happiness that is God. Should I stop now? Should I stop? Who wants me to stop? Should I continue with Bharat? No? Sushmati, your call. Go? No? Acha? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. There's no hunger when it comes to satsang. Ready? You'll enjoy it? Okay, so we don't 
राम शत्रु नवेद प्रकाश श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम